For 2019, the Chevrolet Silverado has been redesigned. It's the most tested GM product ever produced. We've got a more rigid frame. It's lighter. There's a lot of different stuff in here, but some stuff that's the same. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's get started. For this video, I've already reviewed the GMC Sierra Denali for 2019, the Chevy LT Trail Boss. So this review is going to be a little bit different. If you want to see all the full details of those vehicles and some of the other trims, please be sure to check those out. I will link to those above. But with this Chevy, we do have eight different trim levels, which is really awesome for people that really want to see a whole bunch of different variety of things. Our particular model is the $67,420 High Country trim level with some options on it, about $10,000 of options. And starting on the exterior, we've got unique grills. We've got, you can get a difference between a body and chrome color bumpers. Of course, we've got the painted bumpers right here. We even have a $1,000 iridescent pearl tri-coat paint, which looks really sharp, really nice. It's a pearly white, all LED lights up front, daytime running lights, fog lights. One difference you'll notice is that we have the rounded wheel wells while the Sierra kind of sticks with the squared off looking wheel wells. And typically you'll get all terrain tires on the high country, but we have the optional 22 inch wheels with all season tires. And these wheels are just massive. It, it really makes this truck stand out. It's definitely more of a city looking truck. And I wish we had all terrains, but the all seasons do okay. Uh, we have retractable running boards optioned on here as well, and they actually move out when you open the door, and then they can move back by the touch of a button inside the cab or on the back of the running board, so it makes it really easy for you to get into the bed of the truck using your running board, and then they'll tuck right back up under the cab when you're done with them. Our mirrors are power folding, auto dimming on the driver's side. You can have the reverse tilt on one side or the other, or both sides, you can customize that, and they give us perimeter lighting, puddle lighting, they do an awesome job of lighting up the exterior of the vehicle at night when you need them. Moving to the back, we do have a locking rear differential that you get from Chevrolet. They've had that for quite a while. It helps out a lot in some loose traction situations, especially if you're just in two wheel drive. One wheel spins, the other one will lock in at a certain RPM, and then you're good to go. You got full traction on both sides, and we've got a three to three axle ratio back there. Our headlight, or our, excuse me, our tail lights give us the LED signature tail light a dual exhaust outlet back there. We'll talk about the truck bed in a second, but when it comes to the safety features with the high country package that we have here, we've got front and rear park assist, lane change alert with side blind zone alert, rear cross traffic alert, plus we've got forward collision alert, lane keep assist with departure warning, low speed forward automatic braking with pedestrian detection, IntelliBeam high beam so they're automatic, safety alert seat, but one big thing is there's no radar cruise control. Now one of my favorite things about this truck is the improvements that they made to that truck bed. That truck bed is larger, it's more practical, it's got class leading cargo volume and it's more functional than ever. Before we even get into that, we've got a larger corner step bumper, larger than previous gen so you can fit bigger boots in there, still makes it easy to get into the bed of the truck. I like it personally, I think it's, it's simple, you don't have to pull anything out, it's not gimmicky or anything. We even have a power tailgate. It's easy to lift. You can open it with the key fob or inside the vehicle or pushing a button on the back of it. Like I said, class D cargo volume. We have a higher strength steel floor now. 12 fixed tie downs are standard and they're rated at 500 pounds per corner. You can get up to nine movable tie points. LED lighting, so at night this bed is lit up really well. Plus lighting coming from the tailgate down at the hitch. And then we have an optional 120, 120 volt power outlet so you can stay charged and plugged in back there. The one thing though, is that you don't actually get the multi-pro tailgate that you get on the GMC. I've got um, all the details on that multi-pro and how it works. I really like it. It does seem kind of gimmicky, but you can't get that on this vehicle, which is a bummer. Hopping into the front seats of the Silverado, we've got a ton of space in here. Class leading headroom, legroom, very spacious cabins. These seats are fairly comfortable, not super plush, but they're comfortable enough for me in the week that I've been driving. We've got 10-way power seats with lumbar support. I believe that they were 12-way power last year, so that's kind of disappointing. I don't really understand that, but we still do still have lumbar support. Um, these seats have nice two-tone leather to them. We've got two-position memory, heated and ventilated seats. 
And then when we go to take a look at the rest of the interior, we've got nice switches and buttons for the lights, for the automatic uh, four wheel drive system controls, even a, a driving mode and a sport mode. So that's unique to this year. Plus we also have a column shifter, which some of you really like the column shifter. I wanna know what you think. We've got push button start on this trim as well with a smart key and remote start heated leather steering wheel a head-up display now which shows you quite a bit of nice information more information can be seen on the driver information display which is also eight inches for this trim level and it shows you a lot of information as well which you know ranging from four-wheel drive controls fuel economy audio navigation all of that good stuff moving over the center stack is uniquely laid out it's not my favorite i wish that it was a little bit more revolutionary and maybe a bigger screen like the Rams, but it works okay. It's an eight inch touch screen. We do have the premium Bose seven speaker system. And of course we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, Wi-Fi, uh, Sirius XM as well. Our particular model does also give us a surround vision camera, which is optional. And that works really well. We've got cameras around the vehicle that give us angles on the, each side of the vehicle, the front, the rear, top down, 360 view, it works really well if you're parking in tight spaces, if you're close to something, even the hitch guidance that we have, you can follow a hitch line directly up to your hitch. And you have a hitch light back there, which is fantastic for when you're backing up, makes it really easy. You can line it up, get back there. Once you put it in park, if you have the hitch line activated, it will automatically put the parking brake on. So you don't have to worry about the vehicle moving on you. Just below that, we've got dual zone AC, wireless charging, uh, home remote and a power sliding rear window. Our rear view mirror is automatic dimming as well with a rear camera mirror. The rear camera mirror is awesome. I actually have that on all the time. You flip the switch and you can see behind you with the camera. You can zoom in, change the brightness, all that good stuff. We even have an optional sunroof in here, which is nice. Our big center armrest is just massive. There's a lot of space inside. You've got an LED light inside and more charging ports. Charging ports all over the place in this vehicle. Even a real physical three-prong outlet, um, you know, a couple USB ports, trailer brake controls, switches for your auto stop start, lowering the bed, the power outlet in the back. You can even control the running boards, which is fantastic. In addition to the cubbies in the doors, up on the dash, and our two glove boxes that can be locked, which is just awesome. The back seat for this Silverado is finally on par with the F-150. It is nice and large, three more inches of legroom. Sitting behind myself at five foot nine, tons of space, tons of head space up here even if I sit up. The load floor is flat, so when I move to the middle, I can still sit up tall without my head touching. And in the middle, we do get this armrest, which has the same cup holder setup as we get in the front. Plus, we now get AC vents back here, three different uh, charging ports, and three tier heated seats plus mat pockets on the back seats of the front seats and these headrests back here can even fold down to give you better visibility and in addition to that right behind me and right behind that other seat we've got in seat storage plus underneath of these seats they both fold up and you've got some nice under seat storage for good storage options back here as well there are several different engine and powertrain options that you can get for the Silverado, and I've covered those in the Sierra and the LT Trail Boss, so I'm gonna primarily talk about the 6.2 liter V8 that we get in here. The 6.2 still puts out the same 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, but now we have the 10-speed automatic transmission, and our model has the dynamic fuel management, which is different than the active fuel management in that it shuts off any number of cylinders, about 17 different combinations which will, it'll give you the right amount of torque when you need it precisely. That'll give us 16 miles per gallon in the city, 20 miles per gallon on the highway. Plus, when it comes to trailering, we have the advanced trailering package, which is standard on this trim and the LTZ. That gives us a trailering app uh, where you can monitor the tire pressure or theft alert. There's hitch guidance, hitch area lighting, like I said, uh, trailer light test. Plus, you can get the trailering camera package to offer a better view around your truck and your trailer. That package includes side view cameras, a hitch view camera, additional port for accessory cameras, and then that's available on the LTZ and this high country, but we don't have it on our tester here.
Now getting behind the wheel of the Silverado, my first impressions of this truck is that one, it's big. I had a 2006 Silverado and this is far bigger and just feels so much bigger than that truck. Just like all the full-size trucks have gotten bigger, but it also is really smooth. I'm very impressed with this 10-speed automatic transmission. Like I said, I've seen or I've driven the 8-speed LT Trail Boss and there's a definite difference. This thing is really, really smooth. I mean, even if uh, you're going low speeds, quick or low speed shifting is smooth, high speed getting on it, shifts are smooth. It definitely puts the power down and we even had a little bit of slippage right there uh, with the wet pavement, but first impression is that it's very smooth. So right now I am parked and I'm on a little bit of a hill. So a couple things here, the auto stop start, it's turned off. I'm gonna accelerate and you'll feel the kind of, the, or see the jerkiness. Two, I have the auto track going right now, the automatic four wheel drive with some gravel here. Let me just get on it a little bit. So it's just, it's kind of delayed with the auto stop start. And I don't like that, but I do like the automatic four wheel drive. Right there, I lost some traction going up a little gravel hill, and then it kicked in right away to four-wheel drive, which has always been one of my favorite features of the Silverado, especially when I owned it. When you have off and on slippery and dry situations, it's very handy. I did say how it was smooth, and the ride comfort is pretty good. You know, this truck feels very solid. That's one thing I gotta say about it. But compared to that Denali with the adaptive ride control, I would say that that was smoother, both with ride comfort and with handling. This can get a little bit jittery, a little bit more jittery than the Sierra did with that adaptive ride, but I mean, that Denali is the only one that gets that. So the rest of these vehicles aren't gonna have it. And you know, it's still fairly smooth, much smoother than some of the older trucks that we've seen. And like I said, with the Denali, the handling was better too. If you were going around a corner, it just seemed to be flatter, but the steering feel is still pretty good for a truck. I mean, it's pretty responsive and it's not really all that floaty which is good. I'm not a huge fan of the floaty feeling. You feel more dialed in with this and you have more confidence with it. In addition to our trailer brake controller that we have in the cab, we've got four wheel disc brakes. You've got GM's Duralife rotors and I'm just gonna get on it a little bit or brake a little bit harder after I get over these bumps. Dang, I need to fix this road. Anyways, hit the brakes. We've got really good brake pedal feel. And I think that carries over from last generation. I feel like the brakes last time were also pretty good. I did take some decibel ratings like I usually do. The last time I had a Silverado for the 2018 model, I took it on different road surfaces than what I've done the past several months with all these test vehicles. And the ratings are pretty much identical to the Denali. It's quiet, not quite as quiet as I was expecting, but it is a nice, quiet, serene cab. Here's the auto stop start again. It's off. And sometimes it honestly seems a little smoother than others, but we've got a turn here. Let's go ahead and get on it. And that wasn't even full throttle. And I love being able to hear the V8, even though it's not quite as loud in here and roaring as last generation, but let me put it in sport mode. For some reason, it wasn't working, but now it's working. So it's in sport mode should hold the rpms a little bit higher which it seemed like it was still holding them a little more there you go quick to downshift raise the rpms up and this this v8 i mean this thing can rev pretty well you do still have the tow haul mode as well and the uh, off-road mode touring mode which is what you usually keep it in um, but power is very good in this truck this 6.2 has never lacked in power. And as I hustle it around this turn, I am getting a little bit of body lean, but can't complain bad at all about that. Another thing about this 6.2 is 460 pound feet of torque and being a naturally aspirated engine, it's going to come out later, but I do still feel a pretty good amount of pull, some good torquiness at the lower RPMs, which can be really nice. So in conclusion, these trucks have come a very long ways, especially since my 2006 model. Tons of technology, all the tech that you could really want. It's comfortable, it's quiet, very practical. Towing numbers, payload numbers are all pretty good and respectable. Efficiency really didn't climb like I was hoping it would, which is kind of surprising. I do have a full review of the GMC Sierra Denali 
and the Chevy LT Trail Boss, so please be sure to check those out. I will also have the F-150 diesel right after this, so please be sure to check that one out as well. Should be a comparable trim level. I believe we're getting the Platinum if you really wanna see a comparison between these two trucks. But anyways, thank you all so much for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, car reviews, uh, five likes and dislikes videos. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.